painting Pootie for Illuminated Scrolls by Gail Sterler, known as Mistress Darany Moro Wigan. This is a Puto. It's a baby from a 14th century scroll. You can see that they are cavorting around in these Italian scrolls, and since I did an Italian scroll here, I wanted to put a couple of babies on it that looked like they were wrestling. First I drew a, a very simple drawing in pencil without very many details. Then I started to put more details in with ink and a crow quill pen. A crow quill pen is very, very tiny at the point, so you can draw very small lines. It was used for drawing in period. It probably used a real crow quill, but uh, this is uh, one that I uh, bought at the store. It's a metal nib in a plastic holder. And you can see that the lines on the originals were very small. This particular manuscript is exceedingly small that I uh, based it on. It's only about the size of an index card. And uh, the painting that I did is about a 5 by 7. The little puto are only one and a quarter inches tall. That's about mm, three or four centimeters. So I'm drawing with brown ink, and I made my own brown ink by mixing uh, black and red Kali ink together. I, I use those because they're waterproof, and I can easily erase the lines, uh, the pencil lines, after this uh, ink is dry. And that way I won't have the pencil lines showing through the paint, because they'll float up to the surface in the paint, where the ink lines won't. That's why it's so much better to do your drawing in ink than in pencil. After I finish the drawing in ink, I will uh, erase all of these pencil lines and start painting the grisaille. Yeah, let's get that arm painted. I mean inked in. Now he looks a little better. As I'm drawing in ink, I'm uh, refining the drawing and making it a little bit clearer. I just made this uh, drawing of wrestling babies out of my own imagination, but there are lots of other pictures in period of wrestling babies uh, that I had seen before that gave me the idea. So I'll just wait for the ink to dry and then erase the pencil lines and start putting on the paint. First of all, I'm going to paint on the white uh, before I start painting the gray in the grisaille. Grisaille means gray painting and it's an underpainting. You'll put the colors on top of that, but first uh, create a drawing, I mean a painting in uh, sh shades of gray and white. So in this case I've covered everything with white and then I start adding the gray. I'm using, I believe it's a number one brush or it might be a zero. It's rather small and I'm uh, and I'm uh, putting uh, the shadows underneath uh, and on the sides of all of the forms. And as I go, I'm adding more uh, modeling to the legs and the arms and the face. 
where the foot is fully in shadow, I'm going to completely cover it in gray. And the gray that I'm using is a light gray. I also should mention that the white that I'm using is uh, Dr. Phineas Martin's uh, Bleed Proof White. It's a very, very opaque white and excellent for doing this kind of work. Uh, gray is just a little bit of black mixed with some of the white. I have my paint on a palette where I mix colors constantly and I can change from one shade of gray quickly to another just by adding a little more black. I don't exactly blend the paint. I'm uh, cross-hatching, which means I'm uh, going across the underneath color, so white being the color underneath and uh, gray being on top of that. I'm just uh, doing little uh, lines across it to give it shading. And when you do that, you can uh, shade things darker by putting the line, little lines closer together or uh, farther apart to make it a little bit lighter. Now make sure that I get the eye sockets uh, shadowed, behind the ear shadowed, under the jawline shadowed. I'm putting shadows in the hair and uh, round the hands. Okay, now that I've got all the shadows in, I'm going to add pale pink to the grisai. Now this will suddenly make that gray start looking like skin. There's a little uh, too much light shining on it, but uh, you'll see in just a moment. How once you start putting the pink in, that skin's going to take on a real definite uh, living appearance. You don't have to put a whole lot of pink in. In fact, in some of the uh, um, scrolls, I mean the historical uh, originals, uh, they don't look like they've used any pink at all. But in others, of course, they do use pink and it makes a big difference. I'm uh, adding a little bit of reflective light under the cheek. It really will make it look nice. And I think we're starting with the red now. Yes, I switched to a smaller brush and I'm putting in vermilion. Vermilion is a bright scarlet red, almost uh, orange. Now you can see the red better. I didn't change it, I just changed the position. And uh, now you can see how, how bright red that uh, vermilion is and how the pink which is made with vermilion and white is uh, a lot pinker than it looked in the last picture. So I'm outlining uh, everything with uh, the vermilion color and um, it looks really garish at first. Uh, that red is so bright. But don't worry, as I put more gray on and more shading, that's going to be toned down and it will look just the right amount of red later on. And you'll be surprised at how, just even though I leave it bright red, 
it's going to look proper in the end. Now we're going to go in and, and put in some darker grays and some more shading. Sometimes I've seen the uh, historical pieces, they shade with browns or with blue. Uh, blue is used a lot. Um, but I think that gray is the most common on uh, uh, skin, whether on the Madonna or the babies. It doesn't matter. You're going to see a lot of gray out there. I'm putting the highlights on the cheek there with white and I just had to I got a little bit too much water on that so I sucked it up with a dry brush and now going back to adding the white but I'll avoid that spot for a little while while I let it dry yeah. Yeah, it looks like I got way too much on there, so I ended up covering up the entire eye socket, so I'll have to go back and put the shadows in the eye socket later. Now we're going to go get a little bit more white, and... No, nope, I'm going into the accent with black. Okay, now for the other outlines. Not all the outlines do I want to put in uh, bright red. And there's some areas where it's really dark and it's the interplay between the darkest dark and the lightest light that gives you that really uh, perfect look. Unfortunately I, I don't see a lot of that in um, uh, beginner's work because they're afraid to go very dark or to use uh, the middle tones very much. Ask yourself if you're using gray or not. Uh, gray was used a lot. Now see how I uh, drew on my finger? I wanted to make sure that I was getting a very, very thin line with the tip of my brush before I started painting on because uh, uh, the faces because I'm just going to do the eyes and the little tiny line between the lips of the mouth. And I actually, I'm wearing magnifying lenses to do this because, like I said, it's only an inch tall. And it's very hard to paint that small. That's why my thumb is in the way uh, of a lot of this. Um, because I'm having to get so close to it in order to see what I'm doing. I couldn't keep looking in the monitor to make sure that uh, I wasn't getting my thumb in the way. So I apologize for that. I, I'm holding my breath watching this because uh, uh, I was holding my breath while I was painting. <laughs> Okay, now I've got a lot of the uh, um, the dark uh, black, or sometimes I use raw umber, which is a very dark brown instead of black. You can see how those faces have. Uh, suddenly taken on a lifelike appearance. I'm almost done with them now. At this point, I'm not terribly thrilled with the uh, 
uh, tiny genitalia, so I think I'm thinking already that I might cover it up with a loincloth. And I've started to draw in the hair with a uh, ochre. And I'm using white now to draw the little tiny white lines in the hair to give it uh, a shine. highlighting on the chest. And I think I'm going to do the loincloths, yeah. Let's just put a loincloth on each of them. There we go. I think we're done. Notice how the red uh, and the fingers really make them look good. And there's the final product. Thank you very much for watching.